Today we're going to look at solving a problem that a number of early Altair users ran into. And in that light, I've got an Altair set up here with uh, 8K of RAM. It lets me run Altair's 4K Basic. And as a console, I've got a Teletype. In fact, with 4K Basic, you pretty much had to use a Teletype as your console because 4K Basic had no provision for loading or saving programs. Other than the fact that a Teletype, you had a punch in it that you could turn on and capture anything that was going to the Teletype's printer. So to save a program, you would do a list command in BASIC, which sends it to the console. You would turn on the punch, and that would capture the listing of your program onto that paper tape. Similarly, you could then take that paper tape and stick it in the reader, hit send, and it would come in through the console port just as if you were typing it in. In fact, the teletype was slow enough that Altair BASIC kept up with that with no problem. It just treated it as if you were typing it in, no difference whatsoever. All right, so let's take a quick look at this. Lift the cover so we can see a little better. It's going to be a little bit noisy. And run the program. It's asking me how many times I want to print a message. And then it'll go through a four next loop and print it that many times. Two, five. Say you wanted to save that program. How would you do that? You would type list, but you wouldn't hit return until you get the punch turned on. So let's back up a little bit and see what that involves. First thing I'm going to do is take the punch, take the teletype offline. Now it's operating in local mode. I'm going to go ahead and turn the punch on, and I'm going to hit this here is button, which gives me some blank leader. There was some garbage left over on here. Um, now here is isn't technically made to do that, but the fact that I don't have it, what's called an answer back message encoded on the answer back wheel, it prints nulls, which is pretty typical on the ones that were used for computers. All right, I'm going to turn the punch off and go back online. Switching between line and offline would sometimes cause a garbage character to be printed, so it's typically good to take it, turn the punch off whenever you're switching. All right, so now I'm going to turn the punch. Be right here. Turn the punch back on and hit return on my list command. You can see the listing printing, but it's also capturing over here on our paper tape. All right, turn the punch off. Go back into local, punch on. blank trailer at the end to give us some space and there's our program captured on paper tape all right we go back online all right now I can do a new and erase the program so you can see that it's all gone so to load that program in, you stick it on the reader, and hit start. And as you can see, it's just like we were typing in very quickly, it's basically easy to keep up. And that's how programs were loaded and saved. You always get this error right here. This OK was actually printed onto the tape as part of the listing right there. So it's always going to end up giving a syntax error. But that's no big deal. That's completely normal. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. All right. But as we saw before, I'm going to turn this off so you don't have to listen. But as we saw before running the program, it's extremely loud and extremely slow. And you'd really like to have a video terminal for most things you're doing. The problem is then you couldn't load or save programs in 4K BASIC. So one option would be to upgrade to 8K BASIC which supported their cassette interface. The problem is to add cassette interface, uh, to add 4K of RAM to support 8K BASIC and to buy 8K BASIC was about $669 back in 1975. That's over $3,100 in today's money. So 
that's pretty darn painful if you just broke the bank buying a video terminal, even if you got one cheap that you had to fix or something. Um, another option might be to get like an AB switch for the serial port, where you put it on A to run through your video terminal, but put it over on B to run the teletype and to get uh, programs listed out to it or punched and read in from the paper tape reader. The problem is they're two different baud rates, and so you're going to have to run your console at the slower baud rate, which is 110 baud, which is kind of defeats the whole purpose of your video terminal almost. Um, although I have seen one trick that's pretty cool. When used with the Altair 2SIO, they actually ran the baud rate clock out on one of the unused RS-232 pins so that when you switched from teletype to console, the baud rate also switched on the board you're using. So that was a pretty slick idea. Um, problem is the teletype is current loop. Your terminal is probably RS-232. So now in addition to buying the AB switch, you're, and wiring all that, you're gonna have to go out and buy a 20 milliamp to RS-232 converter as well, and that costs money. Um, but there is a completely software-based solution if you think about it. It'd be fairly simple to patch BASIC to instead of outputting just to the console, output to two physical ports for all console output. Likewise, instead of accepting input from just one device, accept console input from two devices. So normally everything would go to and from the video terminal, but optionally, maybe using sense switches on the front panel, you could enable input from the teletype to read a paper tape or output to the teletype to punch a paper tape. Well, to be truthful, that's what we've been doing this entire session. You see here, I've got A15 and A14 on. A15 says whether or not to send data to the teletype. A14 says whether or not to accept it. So everything we've been doing has been going to and from the teletype, even though our actual console is this video terminal. I'm gonna turn the teletype back on. All right, if I do a list, you can see this is stuck going at the baud rate of the teletype because the teletype is online right now because I have A15 rays. I'm going to turn A15 off. That says don't send it to the teletype. Now look. Now I'm running nice and fast with my video terminal. I can do 10 of these, no pain whatsoever. All right, so let's take a look at this. How would you save a program? Well, it's the exact same procedure as before. It's just that you turn on A15 whenever you actually want it to go to the teletype. So I'll type my list command. Order the teletype and do what we did before. Go local, turn the punch on, do some leader. Go back online. And now, just turn on the teletype output and hit return on your list. Obviously, you can hear that going. Turn the punch off, go local, advance some later. And there I've got my program punch. You can turn A15 off. And you're back and just running here normally. If I could type. Jeez, I'm good at that. One more time. There we go. All right, now let's say you had nothing in here and you wanted to load the program. Well, all you do is make sure A14 is on, which it is, and frankly, you don't really ever need to turn A14 off because it's never gonna input accidental garbage from the teletype, really. And you probably won't even have your teletype on unless you're gonna load and save the program. So let's go ahead and stick the paper tape in. Alright, I'm going to hit start. Now you'll notice here now, since I don't have A15 on, I don't have enough of the teletype print. But it is all coming in here at the speed of the teletype. Okay. So that's one nice thing here, is you 
don't have to print as you're reading the tape. So the program is now in. And we can run it nice and fast. And in fact, we can spend the rest of the day using this, playing games without having to listen to that teletype, except for when we're loading the programs. All right, so um, that does it for this video. Just a way problem solved in the old days, finding the places to patch are not that difficult because as the um, computer is sitting there at this OK loop, it's in a very small loop looking for input. You just stop the machine and see where it is. That's the point where console input is done. Likewise, just set it to print to a teletype and you'll see that it's mo mostly spent in a loop waiting on the teletype. It's very easy to stop the machine and then find the transmit point in the basic. And then it's not too hard a job to patch it like we did here. All right, now the computer I used for today's video is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look and the feel, features, performance, and the limitations of a real Altair, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. So it's very reliable and you don't have to worry about damaging a vintage, a vintage computer, especially the way they're going on eBay for such ridiculous high prices these days. But anyway, get hold of this kind of computer and you can do all this fun stuff without having to worry about uh, damaging your collector's quality one if you had one. Take a look at AltairClone.com to learn more about this computer.